All right, so I think I'm starting to understand what Oda was trying to do with Rebecca's character and just everything with her situation. A lot of us still, regardless of what, wanted to see Rebecca do some awesome shit. I wanted to see Rebecca step up and say, I don't give a fuck. And that still could happen. That still very well could happen regarding her fight with Diamante or, well, what's going on with Diamante right now. So we, we could definitely get that moment, which it would be awesome. But I think more so the story that he was trying to tell was, a father, and I'm, I'm putting in a lemus, you know, whatnot, but a father that he was in a fucked up situation where he had to rely on his daughter to protect herself. He couldn't protect her in some dire times, but now that he's in a position to do so, he doesn't want her, his daughter to ever do anything again, and he just wanted her at least to maintain. He didn't want her to become him or a, a boss or anything like that. That's my daughter. That's my little girl. Just maintain until Papa can come back and do what's right and defend my daughter. I don't ever want you to do anything again. So I think what Oda was trying to do is basically, she's not a badass. She never was meant to be a badass. She was never meant to even be a fighter for that matter. She had to just maintain enough so daddy can come back and save his little girl. I think that's what Oda was trying to do with this one. And if he did, it's starting to make a little more sense. Still doesn't make up for the fact that Rebecca's cried a billion times and whatnot. But I'm starting to get it now because I think when Keto said, I don't want my daughter to ever have to you know, lift another sword again. It makes more sense. That's where Oda was trying to go with that. So this chapter yet again, it seems as though every chapter, while again, arguably we do want to see the Doflamingo Luffy stuff, etc, etc. Ultimately, we're wrapping this arc up. Oda is finishing one fight off after another. And again, he's not using the straw hats. And I like that because it's like shown in manga is always, you know, the same. You know, let's just say there's a crew of 10 heroes, crew of 10 or 11 villains. And then it's one, 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 one. The fact that he's using a lot of the Colosseum people and the, the buildup for the Colosseum Coliseum to actually pay off at the end of this arc is doing a fine job at cleaning up some of the slow parts and some of the build-up because a lot of this arc was building up these new people. We, we got introduced to a lot of these people, Cavendish, you know, the Hoppo, Navy, all these people that got built up ultimately is now paying off and it's definitely going to pay off in the distant future when Zoro was like let me remember that name in case shit happens in the future or whatever he wants to remember that because I guarantee you at some given point Sai and the Hoppo Navy will return maybe Don Chin Jiao will be dead at that point but Sai from the Hoppo Navy Baby Five all of them they're going to come back and I wouldn't be surprised if Sai comes back looking buff as a motherfucker like a true descendant of Don Chin Jiao the Beast Later on down the road, maybe in a big war that's going to happen or something, it's going to happen and we're going to see the Hoppo Navy, we're going to see everybody from the Coliseum, so in that sense, Oda was using this arc to plan for the distant future, not even just what's happening right now, how everybody is helping out and it's changing things around from the Straw Hats having to do everything, but he's doing it for like chapter you know 8000 you get what i'm saying a lot of jokes in this chapter as well you know some of that baby five marriage stuff and then also the barrier with cavendish and bartolomeo i'm gonna lie i I would be like Bartolomeo too, bro. Okay, like Robin winking at me. Come on, it's Robin. I, I'll be your slave, baby. So a lot of comedy, and I know some people don't really like that. I don't I don't get why One Piece has had comedy in it for loads of, you know, the entirety of the series. But I personally enjoyed it. I thought it was funny. Not the main character or anything like that. But the Bartolomeo stuff, please let Bartolomeo become a straw hat. Even if he's just a straw hat fanboy and that's his whole motif. I love Bartolomeo. I, I would love just like, he would be bowing down to Chopper, calling him God, come on. And then something in the chapter as well kind of got me interested regarding Dillinger being a descendant of the fighting fish. Now, does that make him a fishman? And if it does, is he half human, half fishman? Because he kind of looks like a human. So could he be the first crossbreed? Could that actually tie back into Fishman Island or something like that? Because he's had those horns and everything, and now everything is starting to make sense. And then when he just started fucking biting on, I think it was Hideo. If I'm not much, I might be wrong, but I think that was Hideo. If I'm, if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. But <laughs> I think that was that dude's name when he just started biting the fuck out of him. And kind of like, yeah, I don't know if he's dead or not, but y y you're done goofed, bro. Dillinger got you. So something very interesting, again, kind of making a little bit more of that Fishman Island. And if that's the case, if he's a crossbreed, then if there's more crossbreeds between humans and fish then maybe we can, you know, close the gap of that racism. And then at the end of the chapter, where basically after all the jokes, it kind of paid off because what happened with Gladius knocking him basically the fuck out, Hakuba is awake and Cavendish going in, fucking basically striking down another of the executives, Dillinger, and probably Gladius will be knocked out next chapter as well. So we got some progression on that aspect, kind of tying into some other stuff, setting up for the future later on down the road. So overall, this chapter was a good to a very good. I personally thought it was pretty fucking awesome. Some of the things that happened in the progression and I'm glad that 
we're not okay. We're not focusing on Doflamingo. I get it. People are upset. Whatever. This chapter is better than, by the way, like the last I think two chapters, something like that, because this just had better content to it. It just felt a lot better. So good on that aspect. But just the fact that we're getting yet again now Dillinger's out, even though he kind of came like a fucking monster all of a sudden. Haku was awake, and that kind of shows that like the setups that happened. If we didn't know who Cavendish was, we wouldn't give a fuck about Haku. But if we didn't know who Haku was, the awakening that he gets from basically he knocked the fuck out it wouldn't matter so the fact that all that build-up happened and now it's paying off is like okay Oda you planted some seeds and now they came to fruition and you're using them properly those are signs of a great writer so yeah I'm gonna give this one like a seven and a half to an eight I, I can't decide between the two because at the end of the day it did wrap up we did get progression but once again a lot of comedy in this one and while comedy is you know funny and everything ultimately that doesn't necessarily add a lot of value to you know progressing things along and whatnot so seven and a half to an eight around there let me know what you guys think though what do you think about the beginning with Rebecca do you start to understand it now basically of a father wanting his daughter to maintain until he's in a position to once again protect her also if you were Bartholomew would you be like that as well come on you know you would if you love One Piece you would alright what do you think about that ending with Dillinger do you think that's gonna tie in somehow is he a half breed or is he just strictly a descendant of the fighting fish and he's just strictly a fishman like what's up with that and hakuba taking dillinger out like yo crazy shit but that's all i have for this review thanks for watching hope you enjoyed if you liked anything i had to say or enjoyed the video drop me a like i greatly appreciate it and if you haven't subscribed if you could do so as well that'd be awesome i'm for world and as always people have an awesome day robin please wink at me